The engine engineering project started with a question. Could I do any useful work with this tiny, simple engine running on low-pressure air? This crude winch was the result, and it did at least do something, lifting two and a half times the engine's weight at the speed shown here. But I wondered if the engine's performance could be improved. This led to a computer simulation of similar engines and some engine testing using this dynamometer. At this point, the project took on a life of its own. Since quick engine modifications would be needed to test improvements, this easily modified little baseline engine, with the same bore and stroke, became the standard of reference. It's also easy to scale the engine's design, an exercise that's helpful in understanding the effect of component inertia upon an engine performance. Here's the baseline, flanked by double and half-scale versions. Since friction is the most significant loss that decreases engine-delivered power for this sort of engine, and coefficient of friction is a significant parameter in the simulation, it seemed reasonable to collect some coefficient of friction data for the materials and lubricants used for the baseline. This fixture measures the coefficient of friction for planar joints, and this measures it for rotating joints. Adding a flow meter allowed comparison of both delivered power and airflow rate measurements with simulation predictions, adding a little confidence in the simulation's accuracy. With engine modifications and testing still a work in progress, the simulation predicts that it might be possible to quadruple the baseline engine's delivered power. This plot reflects delivered power improvement for a few simple changes, with many more changes to go. Let's use the term engineering in a broad sense, ranging from its early use to describe not only the work of great inventors, but the pursuits of hobbyists as well. The engine engineering section goes into some simple theory, but in at least one place veers off in an almost whimsical direction. This ugly thing is the result of asking the question, just how bad can an engine be and still work? This is the first version. And this is the second version, more preposterous than the first, with primary axes of motion skewed at random angles, here running at full speed, and here filmed in slow motion. Notice the rubber band. This version won't run without it. At first this was intended almost as a joke, but as the strange project grew, it became a point of discussion that illustrates some of the topics explored in more serious videos. We'll even measure its power to displacement ratio and compare it with a much smaller baseline engine. Along the way, I became interested in the very early history of engines, leading to some research and modeling of the first, at least conceptual, steps in harnessing heat to do work, some 2,000 years ago. This is a working model of the automatic temple doors, and this is the Eola pile, both concepts documented by Hero of Alexandria, Egypt, in the first century AD. As obvious by now, I enjoy testing stuff, and even these historical projects led to some analysis and testing to better understand how they work. Here's an analysis that predicts the behavior of the Temple Doors model, and an example of test results for comparison with the predictions. And this fixture measures the stress-strain curve for copper, data used for a nonlinear analysis of things like the Eola pile boiler. Granted, a bit of overkill, but it's fun digging a little deeper into even simple things. Measurement and testing go hand in hand, and some history of mechanical measurements seemed like fun, initially homing in on the Palmer micrometer, the first useful handheld micrometer that spurred an entire industry in the U.S. and around the world. The mid-19th century French patent shows remarkable insight into things to follow. On a lark, making a replica of the Laws micrometer, one of the, shall we say, less successful attempts, seemed like a good idea at the time since none of the originals seemed to have survived. A few other examples of more practical designs of the period illustrate the rapid development toward the modern micrometer. Discussing some other steps toward precision measurement, I think I've dated this Johansson gauge block set to within several year range in the very early 1900s. It's interesting to speculate whether the block's currently fairly low precision is the result of extensive use or of their initial precision.
This set was presumably owned by William Hoke, ultimately finding its way to the educational displays of Leighton Wilkie, the founder of Dual. While not as old, I like this Dual set of transparent ceramic blocks, simply for its beauty, and the Bakelite case gives a nice taste of the 50s. These are examples of some steps toward more accurate comparators, employing mechanical, optical, and electrical techniques, and all wanting some serious cleanup. Other topics may range from some notes about constructing what I call my old shop, a place for some things roughly dating to the late 1800s, to a little history of Dual, a manufacturer that's always interested me. Their founder, Leighton Wilkie, expanded the company to span the U.S., marketing a wide variety of products far beyond their bandsaws. Wilkie was also heavily invested in the education of both those in manufacturing and the general public. This is a low-cost kit for welding urethane belts using a couple of commercial parts and a shop-made jig. Commercial kits are surprisingly expensive. The jeweler saw is one of my favorite hand tools, and it's been fun taking a close-up look at a variety of blades. I'll even reminisce about making a set of tuned anvils, well, really tuned I-beams, that were used for the anvil chorus in a production of Wagner's Das Rheingold. So, if anything, the videos will be a Duke's mixture of stuff I've enjoyed over two decades since retirement, and some things in progress or just planned. These are random shots of a few other things we may discuss. I work slowly, so we'll see what makes it to publication. But whatever makes it should offer a little variety and a lot of testing.